Pastor Brett Leonard. I'm from Colville, Washington, which is the northeast part of the state, and I pastor at a church called Shiloh Fellowship. Thank you. Pastor, would you please start sharing your amazing healing testimony with us? Amen. We give God all the glory. Amen. Um, I just want to mention, I just want to say before my testimony that there's a scripture in Deuteronomy 9 where God says that don't think when he's going to bring the children of Israel into their promised land, he said, do not think that you are going into the promised land because of your own righteousness. He says, but I'm doing it for my name's sake and because I hate evil. And so the testimony that God has given me is not because of I'm a pastor. It's not because I'm righteous. There are none righteous, but it's because of what Jesus Christ has done, and it's for his name's sake. Amen? I s suffered with a severe digestive problem for over 20 years, and through the years, uh, I could not tolerate certain foods, and, and mainly the foods that I couldn't tolerate were fats. Uh, and, and, and got to a place where I was finally diagnosed with a condition called pancreatitis, which is precancer of your, of your pancreas. Your pancreas is used to give you enzymes to digest food, and my, my pancreas would not do it. I could not digest fats, dairy. Um, I didn't eat. I hadn't eaten a hamburger for over 10 years. I hadn't, yeah, that's kind of hard for some of you to imagine. <laughs> and, and I hadn't eaten at a restaurant for over 10 years, and that's hard for pastors to imagine, especially pastors who travel, amen? <laughs> and it was very difficult. Um, uh, I couldn't eat meat. All I could eat was boiled chicken. And uh, it just got worse and worse and worse, and I would have severe um, vomiting, diarrhea, keep me up all night, and it, it, it really had a tremendous, terrible effect on my life. Where have you been in search of solution of this, from this problem? Uh, so I've been to a doctor many times. Uh, I, uh, you know, I just started out going, explaining my problems. They thought they were just ulcers and things like that at first. Um, and then when it began to get worse and worse and worse, uh, about five years before my healing, the doctor prescribed for me a prescription enzyme. I had taken all the enzymes that you could get through the uh, natural food uh, places, and uh, eventually they did not work at all. He he, uh, I had to take an enzyme with every single meal just to eat what I could eat. And I asked him at one point, I said, what's going to, because my diet became more and more limited. Uh, and I said to him, the last time I was there, I said, what's going to happen when I can't eat anything? And he seriously looked at me and said, then we will put you on a feeding tube. And I was shocked. And I said, I'm not going there. And I had been prayed for for years. I'm a pastor. Uh, I've, you know, your church always wants to pray for their pastors when they see their pastors suffering. You know, so they're always wanting, let's pay for Pastor Brett. Uh, I had been, many people prayed for me. And I knew that my healing did not, uh, does not happen uh at this moment, I knew my healing happened 2,000 years ago when Jesus Christ died on the cross. Amen? And we are tested whether we will believe what our situation is saying to us or whether uh, we're going to believe what the Word of God says to us. And I tell people who, there are people who say when you pray for them and they don't get healed, oh, well, you must not have faith. I say the man who has faith is the one who walks away from a prayer and doesn't see anything and says, thank you, Jesus, I am still healed. Amen? Amen. And so what happened next? How did you receive your healing? Well, <laughs> God is so good. Amen? And uh, I was opportuned as they say in Africa. <laughs> they always say that. I was opportuned. I had the opportunity to, uh, <laughs> to uh, go 
visit Apostle John Chi and the AECOM ministry in Cameroon. I had followed uh, him and his ministry through uh, Prophet TB Joshua and Scoen. And then when he uh, uh, left to start his own ministry, I didn't know where he went. But my good friends, Michelle and Justin Downing, who are here tonight, uh, had followed him, found him. And we began a prayer group to pray for his ministry and for him to come to America. Well, at the beginning of 2015, they said, we're going to Cameroon. Would you like to go? And I said, I would love to go. I will pray about it and I will ask God. But I had a problem. <laughs> I had always told God that I could never go overseas, especially to Africa, unless I was healed. Because I thought I would die. I mean, I thought oh, either that or I'd have to fast the entire time. And I didn't want to do that. <laughs> you fast before you go on a trip, not usually while you're on it. So <laughs> I said, you got to heal me. But he wasn't healing me. And I prayed. I said, Lord, if you want me to go bring in the finances. Two weeks before the day, a man calls me, says, hey, have you gotten any funds for your trip? I said, no. I'm a, I, I, pa I help pastor. I'm an assistant pastor at a very small church. Said, I have no funds. And he said, okay, I'm paying your whole way to go. And I was amazed. And I said, but God, I'm not healed. But man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. He said, go. And I was like, man, I've got to go, whether even if I die. So, <laughs> so I... Uh, we, we uh, uh, Justin and Michelle and myself, we went to Cameroon and I was, by the grace of God, I was able to meet Apostle John Chi and uh, we went to the service on Sunday and I got, I filled out the, the card, you know, and you know, you who've worked at uh, Scone, you know all about it and they're holding the, the card and so I'm waiting in the prayer line for prayer and the man of God's coming along, and right before he gets to me, he starts casting out a pig out of this man, or the spirit of a pig out of this man. I'm just watching this awesome deliverance that I've only seen on TV. And, uh, excuse me, I've seen a few in the ministry at times, but it just really built my faith. And so I'm, I'm just getting ready for the, the hit, you know. <laughs> Either the physical pow or the fire to hit you. And what happened when he came up to you and prayed for you? What did you feel? Immediately when he put his hands on me, I felt nothing. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. And I said, okay, I don't have to feel anything. In fact, the man of God never even spoke a word when he prayed for me. He never even prayed. He never said the name of Jesus. I felt nothing, but all I felt, he was staring at me in the eyes. And all I could feel was the love of God coming through Apostle. And it was just filling me. I was so thankful. And I was, he still didn't say anything, just put his hands all over me and went on to the next person who hit the ground. And, you know, and I'm standing there again having to say, Thank you, Jesus. I'm healed. So. And when you came back to the United States, how did you find out when you were healed and when? Well, what happened was, I actually found out while I was in Cameroon. I, I knew this ministry. I knew if the man of God told me I was healed, I was healed. Because they don't just, I mean, we say it by faith, but I'm talking about you are actually have received that healing and so I said God I need a word because I don't believe in telling people to quit their medication as a as a just a sign of faith presumptuously you need to hear from God I've seen people's lives damaged because they've presumptuously stopped taking their medication but I said God I need a word I need help so that night I was, I had the opportunity, opportune to see the man of God. And uh, the first thing he says to me is, go test your healing. I'm waiting to hear your testimony. I said, that's it. That's all I need. Hadn't eaten in restaurants for years. I went back to the hotel. I ordered food and we even had African food. And... Uh, and then the next, and without my medication, and then the next day, 
I ate all day. I ate fried food. I couldn't eat any food cooked in oil or had any kind of oil in it. And I ate fried plantains. I ate fried French fries. I ate... I ate all this, and by the end of the day, I knew without a doubt I was completely and absolutely healed. And put your hands together for Jesus. Now, did you go back to the doctor? Well, I didn't have to because I started eating everything. My doctor actually moved out of town, so I didn't have the opportunity to go back to that doctor. But if he ever comes into town, I'm going directly into him and telling him there's no need for a feeding tube anymore. Because I could not eat dairy, I could not eat meats, and I started eating, I ate airplane food on the way home with no problems, amen? Yeah, hallelujah. How long have it how long it's been since your healing and you now eating all kinds of foods? Amen. This month it has been one year. Hallelujah. This is amazing testimony of what God has done and heals your body. Now, can you please tell uh, maybe a word of, of advice to people who may be struggling with some kind of a sickness? What can you tell them? Amen. Your prayers are never in vain. God always hears you. Don't stop praying. Don't stop believing. I suffered with this for over 20 years. I'm a pastor. It was humiliating for, it's, it can be humiliating sometimes for pastors to have sicknesses. But we need to be an example. And God has a timing for your miracle. God has a timing for your healing. And so don't be discouraged with the process you're going through. And don't give up believing what the Word of God says. This is why you must fill your heart with the Word of God. It must become a part of you. It cannot be just up here. It has to be in your heart. You have to be in the Word, and the Word has to be in you because you're going to go through these trials. You're going to go through your testing. Your salvation is going to go through testing. And you need to be able to say, I believe the word of God no matter what. And though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Amen. You must trust in God.